I start making a wheel, <coughs> I like to start by making the spokes first. Now this is a piece of English ash. Um, I bought it as a plank. I've cut it to length. It's gone through the planer so it's nice and smooth. And it's cut to the right size. I've cut the mortises on the end. And now I'm going to use a tool called a draw knife, which is this thing here. And I'm going to get the basic shape. Now you work by pulling the knife towards you. taking some quite big pieces of wood off and getting it roughly to the shape that I need fairly quickly because if I'm doing a wheel I've got an awful lot of things to do. This particular carriage I'm working on at the moment I need to make 54 spikes for so you don't want to spend too long making them. that I want. I now use a tool called a spoke shave, which is a two-handed plane. And again you work with the ground of the wood. shape that I want. And there you are, that's a basic shape of a spoke. So we get to our pile. Only another 50 more to do. Now when you make a wheel the obvious place to start is from the centre. And you make what's called a hub. Now in the south we call them hubs, up north they call them the nave. You start with a piece of tree trunk, stick it on a wood lathe, turn it so it's nice and round, and then you drill a hole all the way through, comes through to there, put your shape in. Now the next thing we've done is we've put these metal bands round, and this is to hold the whole thing together because we're about to put some stress into this. So we make the metal bands, and the bands when we make them are just about the same size as this, you measure it ever so carefully, and then we stick them in the fire, get them nice and warm and that expands the metal and then we can quickly slip the bands over the top so as you can see we've got a little bit of charring around here uh, this is nothing terrible it just means we weren't very fast at getting it round so we've got the metal band on the front we've got the metal band on the back and now the next job is as you can see on this one here is we need to start making the mortise holes now as this is going to be the front wheel we're going to put 12 spokes so we need 12 mortises on the back wheel it's going to have 14 spokes, so for that we would need 14 mortises. Now the way to make sure we've got it in the right place is we use an indexing jig. And we start with a plate like this, which as you can see has got 12 holes around the side. And we put that in place here. Fix it down into place. And that's ready to now go into the jig. We put that bit on the front there. The hub in the jig then goes into the mortising machine. Well, that's the last one done. That's probably taken me 15 to 20 minutes. Now there's a very famous book for those of you who are interested, written by a man called George Sturt. Now George Sturt was a school teacher in the 1700s. And he was left the wheelwright's factory by his father who died. And he spends a long time in his book telling all about the varying trades to do with the wheelwright's factory. So you had the sawyers who would make the wood, you had the wheelwrights themselves who would make the wheels, the blacksmiths. It's really a carriage maker's factory rather than the wheelwright's factory. 
Now, in the 1700s, if you were a wheelwright employed in his factory, you'd probably start about 5 in the morning, and you'd probably go on to about 8 or 9 at night. And you're all on piecework. And in order to make your money, you would have to make a wheel a day. So that means you've got to turn the hub, you've got to make 12, maybe 14 spokes, and then you've got to do the rim, which is called the fellies, and you've got to do that with an adz, which is like a curved axe, and you've got to do that every day, otherwise you haven't got enough money to live on. Now I have the benefit of modern machinery, um, but I don't quite work 14, 15 hour days, but I think even now I would struggle to do a wheel every single day. Still. Well that's the end of a long afternoon. We finally managed it. There's four hubs already. All we need to do now is fit the spokes and then we're off.